Alright, tying some nymphs. Tying some more nymphs. This is the one I'm going for here. I can see it. So it's like a small, very simple stonefly pattern. I guess that's what I would consider it. It's um, It's got the black bead and then it's got a black ball of dubbing behind it that you can't really see because the hackle's covering it. Soft tackle, front and back, same thing with the coil body. Very simple, small, it's about a 14, 14 1x long. This is, this is the hook. It's just a whatever you can get, size 14. Right, 1XL or just straight 14. The bead I'm using is a small one, it's a 330 seconds black bead. I think this is matte black. No lead. This is Vivas 16 0. No lead, just the bead. This is like a middle fly on a three fly rig or a maybe even a top fly on a three fly rig, but definitely a top fly on a two fly rig. Not crazy heavy, but it's got the bead there. The tail is this uh, natural black soft tackle. Maybe 10, 10 fibers is probably okay. You don't really want it to be more than, say, half the hook. Doesn't have to be that long. You want to you you want to tie it on pretty close to the to the bend though. Yeah, maybe a hair longer than that. Yeah, I think that's okay. And then. We're going to tie up now. And then we'll come back and put the quill on. There's the, there's the quill. It's just a, just a, just a natural quill. Making sure the, all the fibers, I bleach this one. I usually like it to take it out before I, before I really burn the hell out of it, so sometimes there's some, there's still some fibers left on it. Should just go over it. Or you can buy, you know, Polish quills or something like that, and they're they're done already. But this is a lot cheaper doing it this way. And I just cut off right where the transition from 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 large to thin. See that? Then I put it in this hackle plier. This is the one I use for coils. It's called a teardrop. It's very light. That's what you want. Something light. So I, I put it in first. Then I make sure it's wet. Now here's the key to this stuff, to keeping it wet. Never touch it with dry fingers. So, for instance, I'm going to grab it now with these fingers, so I'm going to lick it first. Never touch it with dry fingers, because if you do, you will, without a doubt, suck all the moisture out of it, and then it'll break. That's why I have it on the hackle part, because I can just take my finger off now and tie it. Just make sure each turn right in front of the next. Now I'm not even going to waste any time cutting this little piece off right now. I'm going to go right into tying because it's the moist it's going to be right now. The longer you wait, more time it has to dry. Now, also, if you notice, I didn't put any super glue on. And that's because if I want to go back, I can. If it breaks, I don't have to scrape the whole thing. I can just pull it off. So, no super glue. I go here. And you only need two turns, really. Man, maybe three, just to get to the, the bead. And then you can break this off. Now obviously three turns is not what's holding this thing on. You're going to UV it. 
this is what's going to protect it because you're not using super glue. Just put a drop on. I like to make sure I get all the way down to where it meets the tail. piece of stem in there we could cut it off but I don't think it matters too much okay now we go back to our our soft tackle here it's just a natural black if there's ever a question of whether something's natural or dyed when you look at something like this this one I think is clearly not dyed because you can see that this but let's say it's just in the package and nothing's pulled out of it well just look behind at the skin because the skin is going to take some of that dye as well as as the feathers so we're going to tie this in at the tip and we're going to do it we don't want it to be too long the hackles and we're only going to put in about a turn or a turn and a half so we, we get that tip out there and then a good a good thing to do is if you put it if you put it in a pair of hackle pliers, small ones, and you make sure all these fibers are back with some, you know, some some moist fingers. You tie it in, a few turns, tie it back towards the hook, clip off this, then fold it this way. Make sure it's wet so all the fibers are out of the way. And when you you got to turn it on with your opposite hand, but what you do it what you're doing here is you're you're folding it back so that when you put the dubbing in, you don't catch it. Make sure it's on your side, and bring the thread back to where you're going to put the dubbing. In. The dubbing I'm using here is yeah, life cycle stone. There's the number right there. Stonefly black. And we don't need much. We're just creating just a, a second second. We're doing two things. We're we're creating that second thorax area, but we're also using it to prop up the legs. Keep the legs, you know, with movement. If you you want it to be away from the fly as much as possible, that's why we're putting the dubbing in now. And why don't we wait to put the hackle in? Because it becomes a real pain to tie it in without that, with that, you know, with the dubbing uh, there, because you only have a small space. Make sure this is good. Then we bring it in front. See that? I just brought it in in front of the hackle. You got to be careful here because you don't want to break it, this hackle, because you got the dubbing on top of it. You know, on, on top of the tying point, which means you have to take the, the dubbing uh, off, which, oh man, you know how tough it is to take dubbing off. I don't know why, but it's insanity. So all I'm doing is putting in, what's that, one and a half. Try not to trap too many in. Try and get it tied in right to the stem. Now you only need to, you only need really two turns because you're going to whip finish on top of it, so which is more turns. So just two turns, cut it off. And what I do here, I do two things. One is I put some super glue onto the thread, and then I turn it in. And then right from there, I whip finish on to the to the wet thread just so I don't get the super glue onto the wet finisher. And then I go back to the dubbing just a little bit, not not much. And all I want to do is try and make this a little bit even and to keep 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 those uh the hackle just just tight in there. Cleans it up, makes it even, keeps the hackle tied in nice. And then I would just whip finish again with with no with no head cement or anything. Make all this make sure all this stuff is back. Just three is okay. Yeah. 
That's it. There's some dubbing is hanging forward just to make it look neater. I think it's fine. It's fine actually with it a little bit stringy too. It helps a little bit. Just just blends everything in. But that's it. Very simple. Now, why is this a, a pattern that is very versatile? Because in reality, once you turn that 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 quill on, you can actually hit, just hit it with a, a marker to change the color, uh, let it dry, and then UV over it, and then you can change this dubbing color. I mean, you can you can put a red, you can put a yellow, you know, olive. If you change the quill to an olive, you change the dubbing to an olive. You maybe even change the bead to an olive. I mean, you really you, you can. You can change this into whatever you want. This is a good basis for so many different, so many different nips. But that's it. Small one. I would call this a call this a middle rig or or, or a top rig fly. Uh, if this is a middle rig on a three fly rig, I would do something really heavy at the bottom, super heavy to straighten it out. Put this at the middle, and then maybe a wet fly, no bead at all, like a. Just a, a just a, a wet fly right at the top there, towards close to the surface. Uh, maybe even a feather wing wet fly. All right, simple, very simple, tiny stone fly. All right, thanks.